people want to see a girl who um, isn't really asserting her femininity and sexuality in any way. And I think there are more comedians who are starting to flip that trope, totally. um, which is really exciting. Hey guys, it's Kirby. Welcome back to Pretty Unfiltered. Today my guest is comedian and actress Jamie Lee. Hey babe, how are you? Hey babe, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> Jamie's hilarious. First of all, you've had an amazing year, okay? Aww. You've been named one of the top female comedians to watch of 2017. She has now been named the new female lead on HBO's second season of Crashing, which is pretty phenomenal. We're gonna get into that soon too. Kay. You have a hilarious wedding book. Wedicul Wedicculous. <laughs> I actually kind of want to get into something a little deep to kick things off, if okay. you don't mind. Yeah, I'll go there. So as a comedian, you work in a primarily male-dominated industry, right? Yes. And I think the past few months have been eye-opening, to say sure. the least. Mm -hmm. Before you actually got into the comedy world, were you ever warned, or was there something that you had learned about that world that you needed to prepare for? Oddly, there was no warning. I think that at that time when I was starting in stand-up, which was almost 10 years ago, I think that the, the culture was to not think about being a woman. Like the way to assert your femininity was to mask it by acting masculine and hanging with the boys and being one of the guys. And so that was kind of my approach to doing stand-up was like, don't remind people that you're a girl. Like even on stage, I was like, gotta wear like, like a baggy shirt and put your hair up and like now, now, luckily, even though everything that's happening um, with like all the sexual allegations and all this, even though that is uh, is really troubling, it also is really eye-opening and I think that it's um, allowing women to assert themselves as women versus women to assert themselves under the guise of being a man. It's almost like you were expected to be like the guy's girl, right? Totally. And you weren't allowed to really embrace your own femininity. Yes. But that's evolved? Think? I think it's evolving. You gotta have some I think it's a, a way to go. Okay, yeah. yeah. I can only speak from my own experience, totally. but I've noticed like in the writer's room on shows, I'm not ashamed to be a girl speaking up. I, I try to, you know, lean in and, and you know, take a seat at the table yeah. and all these things we hear. I do kind of have them on loop in my head that it's okay if you have an idea to be like, oh, sorry, I wasn't finished before like a guy cuts you off. I gotta get in there. I yeah. have to say my piece because my perspective is valuable just in the same way that your perspective is valuable. Abstract person that I'm referring to. Well, exactly. <laughs> what is one assumption that you think people have made about female comedians yeah. that you either hope to change or you have seen evolve over time and you're like, thank God, it's finally happened. I think one thing I'm, I'm trying to change is that girls can talk about the same things guys talk about mm -hmm. on stage. And I think that sometimes when, when you go up on stage as a stand-up, um, you feel a shift in the audience of like, oh, a girl has taken the stage and there were a bunch of guys who went on before her, but now the girl is on stage and, you know, can we let her say the same things even with the same fervor that the guy said. You do get stuck in this thing of like, I have to kind of assume guy energy just to get the audience, men and women, on my side because they're so used to sort of guys being the authority. Yep. And I think you have to you have to kind of ease them into like, no, girls can also be the authority on the same subject matters that men talk about. Would you say that's the biggest issue that you encounter with your job, just in terms of being a woman? Yes, I think that there are a lot of times when um, something will happen in business and I'm like, oh, a guy can assert his feelings about something, you know, not being to his liking and people are like, good for you, thank you for saying something. You know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of go-getter we need, you know? But when a girl does it, there is that like, oh, well, she's complaining or- Being a diva. Or she's being a diva. And especially in comedy, you know, it's very collaborative. And, yep. and, and it's collaborative in a good way. Like everyone's voice is really valuable in making the best possible product, which is why like women and diversity, it's so necessary. And when you don't have it, you see how the product suffers. So as a woman, we mm -hmm. are constantly criticized for how we look, or yeah. how people think we should look. Is there a stereotype of what a female comedian should look like? Yeah, sure, definitely. I think that no one's really talking about it, which is why I'm really glad you brought it up. But I do think people want to see a girl who um, isn't really asserting her femininity and sexuality in any way. And I think there are more comedians who are starting to flip that trope 
Totally. Um, which is really exciting because everyone should be embraced for who they are. And I think that if, if you're an inherently more sexual person, then that should come out in your comedy, if that's you, versus being like, oh, I should squash that part and then try to exacerbate this other part that's not really the larger part of me, but it seems like it's more interesting. That to me is like a comedy killer when you don't lean into who you really are. And it's something I'm still struggling with. I have jokes that I wanna do and outfits I wanna wear where I'm like, oh, but if I wear that, the perception is gonna be this. And it just gets really exhausting. Just own your flaws, because it's way more interesting than being like, I'm fine, everything's fine always. <laughs> that person is a creepy puppet, and, and I don't wanna be that. And it's not relatable at all. JV, what's the worst audition you've ever had? Oh God, there are so many. Um, <laughs> The worst auditions I've had are where the reader, the person who reads lines with you, um, doesn't give you anything and they barely look at you or say hi and you walk in and you're like, please like me, please like me. And then they're just like, all right, go when you're ready. And you're like, oh, okay. What is the best joke you've told mm. or that you're proudest of? And what is the worst joke that you're like, why, why me? I have a worse slash best in Perfect. that I think it was the first joke I ever wrote and it was like before I did stand up it was like when I was a kid and I thought it was so funny uh, so I'll do it for you now ask me if I'm a dinosaur are you a dinosaur no <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it really does it for me <laughs> how old were you I think like 10 like too old is it true yes. one of your comedic inspirations is Miss Piggy? It's true, very true. Please tell me everything. When she gets upset, her like snout goes down and then she's like, <laughs> in Muppets Take Manhattan, she like steals that guy's roller skates and then she's like skating and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there is nothing funnier than a pig on roller skates. And she's always like groaning and she's always like <laughs> mad at Kermit, but he's like still into her. Like they have a really dysfunctional relationship. He's like They should not get married at the end of that movie, but they do. I've never seen like funnier like face and sound acting. That was a great impression. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> All right, so let's finish things up. Let's yeah. talk about crashing. Let's okay. talk about your role. Great. So you went from being in the writer's room yes. to now being the female lead. Yes. Well, That sounds yes. like a dream. One, I guess, yeah, for this season. For yes. this second yes. season. I mean, this is a dream? This is amazing. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm really psyched. So how did this even transpire? Second season before the writer's room started up, I knew that there was gonna be like a, a strong female stand-up and I thought that would be like an awesome role, but I was told at that time, like you you are not, we don't see you for this role. And I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so Great. I was like, went back as a writer and then I found out, oh, they do wanna audition you. And I, at that time was like, oh, okay. I mean, sure, but I'm probably not gonna get it because they were auditioning like everyone. Uh -huh. When I found out, I just started like hysterically crying like of a course. crazy person. I don't know, you just audition for so many things and sometimes you get callbacks, sometimes you get close, but I was like, you never actually like get the thing. And then when you book the thing, you're like, oh, it actually is possible. Yeah. Like it can work out. So all those stories you hear from like famous actors on podcasts where they're like, just stick with it. And you're like, oh, come on. Like, yeah, you should stick with it. Like it, if you believe enough in yourself, like I do think that things happen. I love those stories, though. I do, I, too. I can listen to them over and over me and over. Me, too. It They're really the best is stories. To me. Jamie, thank you so much for oh, joining me today. thanks for having me. Guys. I always say thanks for being here, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm here for you. This is my show, bitch. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> we fight right at the end. <laughs> um, guys, let me know your favorite part of this interview, uh, your favorite piece of advice from Jamie. And if you have suggestions for upcoming guests or topics that you want us to cover, by all means. Send away. We we try to listen. We try. We try. She tries. I mean, no guarantees. Again, it's not but... my show. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you Bye. next time. <laughs>